Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. This played a major role in forming the largest gold and silver deposits. Let's explore! Indeed, gold and silver being found from within the earth. Sometimes you have to dig really deep. Sometimes you can find them on the surface. That's mainly for gold. Silver is very rarely found in natural in its natural state or the state of the metal. Usually, it's, it has to be uh, taken out by ore, um, you know, extracted from ore. But it's interesting, and a lot of it is mined as a byproduct of other metals as well. But there's a very fascinating story that we're going to take a look at here uh, that is from mining.com. Very interesting indeed. Bacteria may have played a big role in the formation of massive silver and gold deposits. And uh, this kind of helps us understand mining and kind of how it, uh, these metals are formed and extracted and bacteria is playing a role. And it's kind of interesting because both metals are kind of... Um, antimicrobial so it's kind of very interesting indeed that the very bacteria that they are used to fight sometimes in medicine may have had a role in the formation of these deposits and so they may have played this major role in the formation of some of the world's largest silver or gold deposits according to some new research uh, and this inference was drawn by scientists at Penn State University and the University of Saskatchewan after they found silver in corporalites or fossilized feces collected from the Ravensthrote River La Garisate in the Mackenzie Mountains located in Canada's Northwest Territories. In fact, you may remember that I did a video about that specific thing not long ago. In a paper published in the Canadian Journal of Earth Sciences, the team explained that the La Garisate is a deposit of exceptionally preserved fossils that sometimes includes fossilized soft tissues or in the case of fossilized warm dung. The fossils that they found date back to the Cambrian geologic period more than 500 million years ago. Today the site sits in a cold mountainous area but in the Cambrian period it was located near the equator and submerged under the ocean. The worm feces found there remains almost intact because they have been preserved in burrows and the creatures dug up deep under the ocean. After analyzing the corporalites under the scanning electron microscopes, the researchers found carbon, pyrite, and aluminum silicates, which are commonly deposited in the type of rocks they were looking at. However, uh, they were surprised when they also noticed the presence of elemental silver. Indeed, and so this is taking us even further beyond the discovery of silver in worm poop to seeing it in, in other rocks and areas around there. After the discovery, they examined the surrounding rock for elevated amounts of silver and found some, but not enough to account for the silver found in the corporalites. If you look at the silver deposits, usually you find other elements associated with silver like lead and zinc, because again, Silver is mainly mined as a byproduct of these other metals. And this is from Julian Kimmig, uh, lead author of the study, said in a media statement, we didn't see elevated amounts of these elements at our site. So there were different mechanisms at work behind the creation of this deposit compared to ore deposits. The Mackenzie Mountains have some rich ore deposits and there are several mines in the region, but none has a composition of elevated silver without elevated levels of another metallic element. So how does the role of bacteria, what role does it play here? Uh, Kim Egg and co-author Brian Pratt began looking at studies of how bacteria can extract gold and silver from mine drainage, as well as from natural habitats. They found that silver formation has also been linked to bacteria fungi, and algae. Uh, thus, the researchers soon realized that microbial activity likely played a large part in the accumulation of silver in the corporalites. 
We likely had the poop first, then we had some bacteria or algae growing on the poop. And some of those were likely leaching silver out of the water column, Kimmig said. To form the biggest piece of silver we found, which measures 300 micrometers, a microbial colony must have been a relatively decent size. For comparison, the width of the human hair is roughly 17 to 180 micrometers. This means that the 300 micrometers of silver seen under a microscope stands out, especially given the low amounts of silver in the surrounding rock. The researchers think the silver either came from the water column or, more likely, brine from the bottom of the ocean. According to Kimmig, some modern organisms like certain bacteria, fish, and oysters can live with a degree of elevated silver levels in the environment, but it's still extremely toxic, and the metabolic systems dealing with uh, this are poorly understood. Some modern microorganisms are useful in extracting noble elements like silver and gold, and scientists have observed similar behavior in the geologic past with bacteria and iron deposits, but they had yet to observe these processes through geologic past in relation to silver. Seeing in the Cambrian period that microorganisms were somehow able to accumulate silver suggests that it is a much older trait than what we might have thought beforehand when we just looked at modern microorganisms to do it. The paleontologist said, it might also indicate that while fluid flow plays a big role in the formation of ore deposits, some ore deposits may have had bacterial help, and those microorganisms could have played a major role in creating some of the bigger silver or gold deposits in the geologic past. So that is interesting. So this is kind of piggybacks in the story that we did earlier on the worm poop. And I'll actually link to that video on the end screen of this video. But pretty fast moving here how this research is, is taking place. And it may help us to help us discover more gold and silver out there if they um, can find where evidence of this bacteria formation. Very interesting indeed. Uh, I love the stories like this that uh, involve science uh, with the metals, and how they are formed and how they can be extracted um, and uh, discovered. And this is just yet another way because uh, gold and silver are metals that are quite unique um, and they um, certainly are known for their properties where they don't they don't degrade, they don't wear down. Silver does react to the environment uh, around it, such as sulfur and other things that uh, can affect its properties, uh, its appearance, it can tarnish and the like. But gold, but essentially gold and silver do not uh, go away. They do not fade away, they do not, they do not erode. So they're beautiful metals indeed, both of them, gold and silver. And who knows, it's pretty interesting. Uh, what we could discover next and what has been discovered so far and how they bacteria may have played a major role in some of these deposits for gold and silver. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below with this fascinating story. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video. And I do hope that you will rate this video, share it, comment, and subscribe.